I command you to lift your head and to look at me. Look at me, you Timon. How long have you been in her life? How many years? Today is your final day. Because my master and king Jesus. What have you been doing to her health? Speak up. What have you been doing to her health? I give her asthma. You give her asthma. What else? Sinus. Sinus. What else? Pain in her knee. Pain in her knee. What else? What have you done to her family? Hey, what have you done to her family? Disrupt them. Disrupt them. Lift your hand and say, every power, every power, every power. working against my life. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Down, down, down. on your back, on your back, on your back. Out, all the way, out of her stomach. Go, and we declare and decree: whom the sun sets free is free indeed. In Jesus' name, thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. we're reading from Psalm 25 verse 4 1, 2, 3 show me thy ways O Lord teach me thy paths lead me in thy truth and teach me for thou art the God of my salvation on thee do I wait all the day long that's Psalm 25 4 to 5 and we're going to read also from John Thank you, Lord Jesus. From John chapter 16. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Are you guys ready? All right, let me go there myself. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If you have your Bible, turn there with me, please. To John chapter 16. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And we're going to read from... The thirteenth verse. But when he but when he the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Amen. And he shall glorify me, Jesus. For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore said I that he shall ask of mine and shall show it unto you. We're going to read from John 15, 9, 20 and then you can be seated. John 15, 19. And make sure you write down these scriptures as we read them. If you forget them, it's Psalm 24, and you can go back and listen to the online if you've missed them. It's Psalm 24, 4 to 5, John 16, 13 to 15, and John 5, 19 to 20. John 5, 19 to 20. All right, let's read. Then answered Jesus and said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, the son can do nothing of himself, but what he seeth the father do, for what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the son likewise. For the father loveth the son, and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these, that he may marvel. The word of God is blessed. We honor it by saying amen. And I want to give special recognition to those who are visiting us this morning. Sister Sharon, it's very good to see you. And God bless you that he has led you to his house. You may be seated in the presence of the great Jehovah. 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. The topic for the message today is guide me, sweet Holy Spirit. Say it with me. Say, guide me, sweet Holy Spirit. Guide me, sweet Holy Spirit. I want to read from the Amplified 25, Psalm 25, 4, 5. You can just follow me as I read. It says, let me know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are the God of my salvation. For you and only you, I wait expectantly all the day long. Amen. I have been saved from, I think, 2004. So, I've been saved before some of you were born. I feel old saying that. And I'm talking, of course, to the younger ones. And the journey has been, God has been good. The journey has been good. God has been good. And from the time God saved me, I wasn't perfect. And I will shock some of you to let you know I'm still not perfect. I remember my brother Tyrone that comes to church. When he's around, he's not working. And he called me one day. Try, and you know, sinners, they still talk about God. And he was having a conversation, Nation, with his friend in Florida. And the conversation reached a point where his friend says, there is no one that's perfect. And to my surprise, Tehran told him, I know someone <laughs> who is perfect. And so I see my phone ringing off 2 a.m. in the morning. And of course, at 2 a.m., I'm wondering who is calling. And when I see Tehran, now my heart is saying, do I have to pray? Because it's unusual for him. And you know when you have siblings and family members and they call you some odd time of the morning, you put on your fake cloak. And he said, Leron, Leron, I have this person on the phone and I'm trying to tell him that you are perfect. <laughs> he said, brother, I'm trying to tell him that you are perfect. And I said, Tiran, that's so nice of you. But sorry to burst your bubble. Your brother is not perfect. But you're so kind. I said, no, Tiran. I said, there's only one man. I am glad that as a big brother, you can say something like that pertaining to me. Amen? It means that there's something that you see. Listen, one of the hardest people to believe in your salvation is your family members. And I said to him, but it was a great thing because now I got the opportunity to minister not only to him, as I often do, but to his friend. And show him why we are not perfect. And it is good to acknowledge that we are not perfect. Because then when we see our imperfections, now we can look to the perfect Christ who died for us. So when I got saved, I really loved the Lord. I still love the Lord. But I, was, I made some mistakes along the way. And anyone who you met from the time I'm saved, they'll testify. Even my, I never consider it this way, but even Deacon Sawyers that came, he said, from you came to church, there was something different about you. But I really don't believe there is anything different about me. It's just that I am really appreciative of what Jesus did for me. How I was lost, but now I'm found. And as I walk my Christian journey, I remember I got filled with the Holy Spirit without truly understanding who the Holy Spirit was. And yes, he gives the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. And the Lord called me to preach very early and I was preaching and I love the Lord. But something happened to me in 2018. I knew of the Holy Spirit. I have read of the Holy Spirit. I, 
I heard people talk about the Holy Spirit. And I thought I knew the Holy Spirit. But in 2018, something happened to me that changed my life. In 2018, I really met the person of the Holy Spirit. I remember I went to church and my mother-in-law was my pastor then was sitting there and some other folks and we we're just talking and I turned to them and I said I have been saved for a long time but it's as if I feel as if I am finally saved. Now I did not doubt salvation but something happened to me in 2018 that caused me to transcend the boundaries of religion. The boundaries of what I was taught. The boundaries of my denominational doctrines. It was 2018 when I locked my son myself in my son's room every evening after coming from work because my prayers used to be like five minutes, two minutes, three minutes. And I know it wasn't of my own accord, but the Holy Spirit, he began to call me into sweet fellowship. And then I entered into his presence and it was new to my home. Victoria and I would often get into it because she was not used to me being in the room. Can I be transparent? For hours, two hours, and she just hear nothing. So she would come out, be in meditation, and she come. <laughs> and I would tell her, how many times do I tell you? Because I don't think she understood what was truly happening. And I would rush from work, nation, and I would close the door, Jonathan, and I would bow before the bed. And I wouldn't shout, but I would seek as the heart, as the young deer pants after the water. I was like a dry, thirsty animal that wanted something beyond hallelujah and praise the Lord and shekata la pradosa. I needed something more. And so I descended into humility. And I began to seek the person of the Holy Spirit. And many times I am in that room and I feel restless because I have things I need to go do. I have food I need to go eat. I have people I can talk to on the phone. But I decided I am not going to move a muscle. If the house is on fire, let the fire department put it out. And I stayed into that room and I bowed before him and I began to talk to the Lord as friend with friend. I didn't feel any chills. I didn't see no cloud up here. I was not taken into any great vision. But in my heart, I knew I needed to be there. And that's why the Bible says, it is not by might, nor by power. It is by my spirit. And my flesh would fight. Because how many knows, the time when you get to pray, is the time you remember to do everything. And I made sure I turned off my devil phone. You call it cell phone. But in that time, it became a devil phone. Because it can distract you. And I turned it off and flung it out the room. And I just stayed there in the presence. And I didn't feel anything, guys. For those of you who say, Pastor, but I don't feel Sometimes it was challenging just being there. And then I learned about meditating on the word of God. And I learned that meditating on the word of God is just sitting there at times being quiet 
I'm just thinking about the Lord in my heart. And one thing, if you have been putting into practice what I've been teaching you, you will realize when you meditate on the Lord, the soul hates meditation. You, you, your mind just starts jump all over the place. And your, your mind becomes like a raging bull that does not want to get restricted. And ever so often you have to take the lasso and put it over the head of your soul and pull it back and say, come back here. And your body will fight. And then your belly will go. Let him go. And so I stayed in the presence. Nobody knew what was going on. My bishop didn't know. No, because this was not my wife. Did, nobody knew. And I start to spend time in his presence. And let me tell you this. None of you will ever pursue God persistently and never find him. If you seek God and you leave the seeking saying you have not found, it's because you wanted God to show up on your terms. Any man or woman that desperately seeks him will encounter the Holy Spirit. He may not come the first month. I can't tell you what your time period has been. And one of the things I believe why the Bible refers to even marital relationship as, as the relationship with Christ. Because olden days when a man liked a woman, the woman was not so accessible. And so if a man really wanted to prove, he would pursue you. You know what I'm talking. You've been in love. And so I believe because salvation is free. It's grace, but when you want fellowship with the Holy Spirit, when you want the anointing of God, it will cost you. And it will cost you something more precious. It will cost you T-I-M-E. Because you can give money and money will come back. Not even money is as precious as T-I-M-E. And as I yearned after his presence. The devil whispered many times in my ears, stop wasting time. Why are you doing in the room by yourself two hours like you're crazy? Get up and go watch some TV. But by the grace of God, I fought. And I said, I need something more. I need when I say to devils, go. Devils react. Prior to 2018, I wasn't casting out no devil. We are on that track today. I need when I say sickness be healed. Because you said, Lord, that everything that I do, you will also do. And I'm not seeing it in my life. And I know it's not that you are a liar. Something must be missing. And so I would run from home before I eat or anything. And I would dive in that, that room and I would close the door and I would tell them. And they know in our household, when I begin to pray... No. Say it, Nathaniel. When daddy begin to pray, no. <laughs> Victoria, when husband begin to pray, no. That time we were learning. Learning process. Now we have mastered it. And so I shot myself. And I sought after the person of the Holy Spirit. And at that time, I thought I was fairly good in my Christianity and I was victorious. And I remember it brought to a, I went to a place. As I started to seek him, I remember there was an image that popped up in the canvas of my imagination. The canvas of the Holy Spirit. And I began to see a cross that was beaming with bright light in my heart. And I would sit there and I didn't know much about these things. You see, you guys have gone into acceleration program. When I teach you something, I am not teaching you theory or something that I've heard on the internet. I am teaching you what I have lived. And I would see, Sister Abigail, this bright cross just beaming with light. 
And I got so comfortable focusing on the cross as I prayed. So I would close my eyes and I would picture myself standing as the glow of the light from the cross overshadows me. And then one evening, I did as I usually do. But when I stood before the cross, Odette, I felt myself shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And not only shrinking, but I was filthy and dirty. I became ashamed. I became afraid. Because as the light from the cross touches me, in my vision, I was so dirty like a man who had lost his mind. And the only reaction that I had was to just bawl. Because right now I understood what I was seeing. I was seeing myself in the presence of a holy God. And his light shone on me. And the brighter it became, the more dirty I was. And so, I yielded to the voice of the Spirit as I was bawling. And he said to me, there is bitterness in your heart. There is resentment in your heart. There is jealousy in your heart. There is pride in your heart. And I bore the more. And the Holy Spirit said to me, he said, get rid of them. I did not argue. I did not re re make recollection of who hurt me and I wasn't... I wasn't guilty of what they... No. At that moment, the only thing that registered in my heart was get rid of them. I didn't try to think about who hurt me, who treated me bad, who, 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 who do what. All that reverberated in my entire existence was four words. Get rid of them. And that's why the Bible says God refuses the proud, but he gives grace. Guys, I am teaching you something beyond the regular church this morning. I am teaching you something beyond the soulless expression. I am teaching you where deep calls unto deep. And I remember as he said that, I say, Lord, I let them go. And as I said that, the dirt and my filthy garment by the glorious light that protruded from his cross begin to strip away all that dirt. And I felt as if, and I knew what happened later on in that moment, is that people tell me during deliverance, I feel as if a weight was lifted off me. I had no idea of the burden I was under until the weight was lifted. And when I prayed and finished praying that evening, I went into the room, someone expecting an experience from the Holy Ghost. But when I came out, I came out someone who has experienced power and forgiveness. And then I began to know that finally I am experiencing the third of the Trinity, the person of the Holy Spirit. I remember I used to struggle with pornography and masturbation for years. I hated it. And after that encounter, after that, can I talk about it? After the Lord stripped me, I Listen, that thing beat me, choked me. I prayed, I fasted. But after I met the person of the Holy Spirit, I remember one morning I woke up right in that period and he said to me, it's over. Amen. He didn't say what was over. But when he said, it's over, I knew exactly what he was talking about. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. pastor is not lying. It's over.
And I realized what I have been fighting through traditional teachings for years when I met the sweet, blessed Holy Spirit for real. He stripped away. That's why when somebody says, I am addicted to this, and I know it's not an overnight thing. Sometimes I let them say it because I know mine took only one night to be resolved. And the blessed Holy Spirit continued to work on me. And I felt new life every day permeating my being. What was hard, where Christianity was hard. You see, when I teach these things, sometimes you say, Pastor, let's argue theologically. When you meet the Holy Spirit, you will know what I'm saying. That's why you don't catch your pastor arguing over doctrines. Because there are certain things that can never be taught. They said it can only be caught. And it's only given by the Holy Spirit. And so, in 2018, my life changed dramatically because... Of the blessed Holy Spirit. And then I found out shortly. In the past when I would pray. Nothing would happen. But I found out. That when I tell a demon. Come out. Demons started to respond. There was something. When I shared the gospel with someone. There was something more. And ever since 2018, my friend, blessed Holy Spirit, has been with me. And I knew him beyond just what I read in the Bible. I knew him as a real person that I've encountered. And I realized the more I knew him, I did not have to restrain myself and beat myself to walk in the fruit of the Spirit. The more I subjected myself to him, I became more loving, more patient, more kind, more temperate. Worked on me. My marriage before 2018, if my wife, my, my wife is the shy one, problems, problems, fighting, arguing, dad, back on problems. When I met Holy Spirit, Everything changed. He told me one Sunday, in, that's why I tell you, when worship is going on, don't sit there and fold your hand and cross your head and, and sit on your head and, and look like, no. You notice we don't pump people to worship in this church. But it grieves my heart when I see we're worshiping and able body people sit there and fold their hands as if God owes them something. You know we don't pump people. We don't say, turn up by your foot down. No. And I tell the worship team, Never pump anyone to worship. And if it breaks my heart, I can imagine the king of glory that you have come to church to worship when angels who are created higher than us are throwing themselves before his throne. We that are mere worms sit there and fold our hands when we sing, we exalt you. And don't tell me I am worshiping God in my heart. Because whatever is on the inside will always translate to what's on the outside. That's why the Bible says, let us not love only in words and deeds, but in our actions. Because it is your action that really tells me if you truly love me. I love when people say to me and Victoria, we love you, Pastor. We love you and Sister Victoria. We are not needy pastors. We, we, don't, we, we, don't, we don't put any taxes on you guys. One of the ways we know that you love us is by your action. And if you don't love us, guess what? If they don't love us, what do we do? We still love you guys. Because we have been called by our master as servants to serve you all. And so, 
I was in church one Sunday, and this is why I'm talking about worship. I don't remember the song that was being sung. But ever since I was saved, I'm a front bench Christian. Even when I go to Jamaica, if I go, when I go, and I go to my church, I tell them the last time I was there, I say, I don't care who's sitting in this seat. When I come in church, that's my front seat right there by the door. I sit nowhere else. I mean, for peace sake, I'll give it up. But y'all know what I'm saying. And I remember I was in church worshiping. And this was leading up to my communion with the Holy Spirit. And I remember as worship was going on, I don't remember the song, but it was a worship song. And as I love to lift the Lord, love, worship the Lord, I lift my hands to the heaven and I was just worshiping. And God spoke to me in my heart. And this is what he said. If you come to my house, you will still see it in my house. The Holy Spirit said to me, if you trust me, I will fix everything. My response to him in my heart did some, I, I noticed I didn't say the worship leader said, if they, no. That's why I said, when you come to church, you are not worshiping worship leader, the person next to you. You must build an altar where you're at and you must sincerely lift your hands and give God worship. Because there is something about worship that provokes the Bible says God inhabits the praises of his people. When you begin to lift your hands and to praise him, it is an invitation for the voice of God to invade. And as I stood there worshiping, nobody knew. I didn't jump, I didn't shout, I didn't speak in tongues. I heard the Lord speak to me. I hear this guy on TV say, if you say you hear God speak to you, you're a madman. I guess I am mad. I have done lost it. And he said to me, if you trust me, I will fix everything my response to him because you must know this if you hear the voice of God you have the ability to communicate back to him in that moment and every moment but if he's talking to you it means he wants to engage you and I said to him Lord you mean everything and he responded to me everything when God says he wants to fix everything guys it's not like me, because I can't fix everything with you. I can't even fix everything. With, but when God says he's going to fix everything, he's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man. That time my marriage is on rocks, my finances are on rocks, everything, my job is on rocks, everything is on the rocks. Iniquity pursued me, everything. Life in shambles. And I left church that Sunday. And whenever God speaks to you, write it down. And I left church Sunday. I went to my computer the first thing. And I typed on it. If you trust me, I will fix everything. Quotation, God. And I printed out. And I went to my bathroom door. When, when I sit on the throne, it's right in my eye. And I put it right there. If you trust me, I will fix everything. I went to her bedroom door. And I paste it on there. If you trust me, I will fix everything. I went to my main front door when I'm going out. And I put it there. If you trust me, I will fix everything. Because I was sure than sure that it was God. And so from that point on, even until today. Everywhere I turn. And this is why I tell you, when you have problems. Take some scriptures and put in some strategic areas. Because everywhere I turned, whatever the devil was doing in my life, even then, I saw, if you trust me, I will fix everything. And my marriage started to turn around. Weeds that were dead are now again being infused with the oil. And Victoria and I started to fall in love as if we'd never been in love before. Amen. Say Holy Ghost, thank you. We became more understanding and more patient with each other. We began to love each other more. I was still a boring husband. I don't know how to do surprises. But our marriage, God. And then my finances. I said, what is this credit card bill doing to me, oh? 
my finances started to. I couldn't even give to church sometime. And my giving started to get back into alignment. And from then, my life just began. And I went to a church, to one of the major prophets. And when I went there, they called me out and he spoke. He said, God says he's going to take care of everything. But when the prophet said that, I didn't know, I didn't, listen, I don't need no confirmation God speaking, you know, but confirmation. I said, prophet, you are telling me what I already know. That's what I'm telling you. The prophetic is good. But anyone who spends time in the presence of God nation, you don't need to wait on the prophet. When you meet the prophet, he will tell you what God has already been speaking to you about. Purpose is not discovered in some online Facebook questions that you answer. And you tag it on your wall, you're a prophet, you're an evangelist. No. Your purpose is answered when you discover the person of the Holy Spirit who leads you and guides you into all truth. And our lives continue to progress. Not only my life, but as men, that's why men must pray. My entire household began to come into alignment as the word of God. I'm almost done. It's too much, but I'm almost done. And I remember, I was always a preacher. Love the word. But I was never in any rush to get into ministry. And even when I had that encounter, it wasn't like, okay, now I feel power of Holy Ghost. I should open church. No, it don't work like that. I said, Lord, Holy Spirit, lead me. Because when you're, woe be to the pastors that lead God's people astray. Woe be to the pastors who milk and steal and destroy the lives of people. And I knew, that's why I tell you, Sister Victor and I, we just didn't get up and say, we feel like pastors. No, we know what we signed up for. I, I, I know I have signed up. And I, you will never hear me come in church and beg. Pastors, I don't even like pastors' appreciation services. In my personal opinion. I'm not saying don't do it, okay? I'm saying in my opinion. It's not something that I run after. Because I'm a very simple person. Now, if you want to appreciate me with some money, fine. <laughs> so, Sister Ivy said last year, I said, Pastor, we know you don't like money. I said, no, Sister Ivy. I didn't say I don't like money. Okay, so let me clarify that. <laughs> <sighs> okay, let me clarify that. But we, we know what to sign up. Anyway, and then after that, spending time in the presence of God. Now, Victoria might kill me for this, but she'll give me grace. Give grace to your... Victoria's father was her bishop, and her mother was her pastor. She, oh, please, Victoria, grace. <laughs> and we felt... The Holy Spirit speaking to my heart. Well, I knew God called me to ministry. I just didn't want to go prematurely. I just didn't know quite when. You know God called you to do something, but your timing is not always God's timing. Because that's why if you, David was anointed 15. At 15, say he's the new king of Israel. But if you read, he didn't get in the office till about 30. Because your time of anointing is not always your time of appointing. Remember that. So not because devils respond to you and sicknesses are healed. It doesn't qualify you to go as yet. And I knew that, that I have to trust the process. And I wasn't in any rush. Because believe me, I could have been doing way more things that I'm doing now, but I'm pastoring and doing this, right? But I love the Lord. Amen. So it's not like I didn't have anything to do. I love anime and I love, I could be sitting and watching a cartoon right now. What's wrong with y'all? <laughs> Hallelujah. I could be doing some jobs where I don't have to work Sundays and I'll be making money. What's wrong with y'all? I could have invested my money in, in restaurants and so. And, and in you listening to another preacher preaching, I'm in my restaurant making money. What's wrong with y'all? 
And as I spend time, the Holy Spirit started to prepare my heart. And he started to say, not in 2018, maybe two years after that, along that line. He said to me, it's time. Now, remember I said Victoria's father, they're in, they're in ministry. So Victoria's a PK. Now, every time in the past, I would say, Victoria, you know we're going to have to start ministry one day. It would cause an argument. Because she would say, no, we need to stand with our, uh, my father. And you know, a typical husband, can we be real? The Bible says you should leave your mother and your father. <laughs> When I say some stuff from the pulpit, I don't explain why I'm saying, but I know what I'm saying. And we used to get in argument because no man wants to feel like they're number two in a woman's life as a male. And that caused problem in not, that's why I said there are certain things that are common in marriage. I don't care how long your father have you when I get married to you. And that's how men feel. We're not saying disrespect, but we were growing. Amen. And I don't hold it against her. But the devil was trying to paint a different picture. And I remember when I started to encounter the Holy Spirit. I said to the Holy Spirit. I said, in the past, I've always said to Victor, we have to go in ministry and cause argument. I said, I don't want no argument. I said, if you are calling me to ministry, if you are calling us, speak to your daughter. Leave me out of it. I don't want to fight in and argue in my household. If you, God... And I remember I was spending time in the presence of God. Spend, just, just basking with Holy Ghost. Lock out everybody. You don't have no friend. And I remember one day, the Holy Spirit, he began to speak to me really strong. And I said to him, I am going to tell Victoria. And if Victoria doesn't answer favorably, I said, I will know. I, I remember, she don't remember, but I remember clear as day. I'm coming out the bathroom because I used to be in the bathroom praying. And I said, Victoria, you know, I think we should get into ministry. And Victoria said, yes. yes. I went to that bathroom. Give me some praise music. And I started to do something. Like, I'm not a good dancer. Huh? Well, give me some. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, listen. She didn't know, but I, I have you had a... Have you ever had some quiet shout moments? Yes! Yes, Lord. Yes. And they say, Holy Ghost. And I had told the Holy Spirit to change my wife because she was too much. And that's why I told the Holy Ghost. But one day I said to the Holy Ghost, Why, Holy Ghost, you really work on Victoria? He says, It's not Victoria I work on, it's you. <laughs> I said, excuse me, <laughs> it's you. Because many times we think it's the next person that needs to be worked on. No. Purify me. And I remember, we, you know, we didn't say anything to anyone. It was just me, Victoria, and Nathaniel would like to listen in on our conversation. And um, I remember one Sunday I went to church. Listen, you know, it's just me and Holy Ghost and Victoria, no, you know. And I'm sitting on the front bench, and my bishop had his, one of his friends that he grew up with ministering that Sunday, and the man was preaching on the Lord. And, I, and he came over to me and he said, young man, the Lord said to prepare for ministry. He's, he's calling to ministry very soon. And I just shook my head like this. And in my heart, I'm saying, thank you, Papa Jesus. Thank you, Papa Jesus. <laughs> Listen, I, I don't know if I've ever told you how we got into ministry. And so we prayed about it. And then Victoria went on another line and this lady was prophesying. And she said, I see the Lord calling you and your husband to ministry shortly. That point. You see, get to the point where you don't need a confirmation. Get to the point where you know the voice of God. And you say, okay, Victoria, we're going to start ministry. Of course, we're going to tell our pastors. You know, we're going to... I'm not going to talk about that process. We told them. They gave us their blessing, and I said to Victoria, well, we started ministry. I've always believed in this. If God calls you, he will make the provision. No, we don't have no money. We don't have no, because I don't believe in splitting church, okay? If you leave and people want to leave, it's fine. But I don't believe, if you're part of a congregation, 
and you sow seeds of discord. Because if you split somebody, church, when you start ministry, someone is going to and finish your ministry. So I said to Victoria, we're not even going to go around the church telling the church, because you know some people are leaving church, and when they leave church, shh, shh, listen, this is a place of bad and wicked, you know. You, you see him? Yeah, man, but the Lord is going to make a way for you, and I'm your way. No, because it will show the heart. Remember I tell you your heart. Don't worry about your clapping and jumping. Your heart must be positioned. And I knew what it was, was to position my heart because I have encountered Holy Spirit. And when you've encountered him to certain dimensions, you don't want to grieve him. And we told our pastors, we don't have nowhere to go. We don't have no... See our musicians here, that's why I love Nation and Romanian. And, and Jonathan, we're going to capture him. And we, when we look, we never know how expensive real estate was. Guys, the little church long that was renting would cost us like ten thousand dollars, and then you all said, hey, "Master, need your money." No, we don't need your money. It takes money to run this thing. And when I look, I say, "Lord Jesus." Now I understand the plight of real pa of pastors who really pastor. Why some of them turn beggy beggy? Because when you sow and people don't give to the ministry, pastor can't pay the rent, especially in New York City. Lord, prepare for us a building and give us no big mortgage, Lord. And listen, the only thing we had was the guidance of sweet Holy Spirit. And we didn't sit down and say, by faith, the building will come in my hand. By faith, I started to call around. And I started to say, you know, look online. We're looking for a building. And a young lady that we know, a family friend, she said, I know of a Presbyterian church. And they have a space. I have good relationship with the lady. Let me call we went there, there was leaking. Victoria didn't like it at first, but I said, Victoria, let's look at the potential rather than the problem right now. And we go ahead. Now, we have building, but we have no people. <laughs> it's me, Victoria, and Nathaniel. And I had some promises later on of people, but I know the Holy Ghost said, listen, who did I say, say to me? The Holy Ghost said, before I start church, he said, don't build the ministry on anyone. Build it on me. So I had Victoria, Nathaniel, and we had blessed Holy Spirit. And we got the place. We, we start announcing. People start giving. Bless God for those of you who gave in that inception. Because it was out of our pocket that we had to pay down. And we just trusted God. Look, look, just look around the room. Just, just look at the people sitting next to you. We didn't split no church. When we left our church, we left in peace. We had no problems. And I silenced Facebook. Because when you leave something or you leave a place, sometimes the enemy tries to sow seed and say, oh, they're throwing words. As far as I know, my bishop and first lady has never said anything bad about us in ministry. And guess what? Even if they, and it's, a, it's their daughter, so I'm protected too. But even if they should, whenever God promotes you, close the door to the voices of those you left behind. Because I want to have a clean heart and a pure mind. And so, we never had any music. I remember... I went down one New Year's night and I said, yes, Lord, yes. And my wife even made fun of me. She said, yes, Lord, yes, yes, I'm getting you back now. <laughs> and Brother Nation, bless God, people. Come on, clap, clap your hands. <laughs> and he said to me one day, Pastor, I have a friend. And I said, okay. And Sister Raquel and Sister Cody, listen, guys, when we started ministry, there were days when it was just only three, four people in church. But I preached like I'm a Holy Ghost empowered bazooka weapon. <laughs> and I remember I said one day to Raquel, I said, Raquel, when I come and preach, especially sin, and they get upset, let them know that pastor was preaching like this. You remember Raquel? So I don't have to wait until church be, because I am guided by blessed Holy Spirit. And look at what God 
has done. Stand to your feet. Please stand to your feet. There is a place beyond singing and shouting. There is a place where deep calls unto deep. There is a place where Christianity stops being hard and becomes easy. Not by might, not by strength, but by your spirit. So when somebody comes to me and says, there's no such thing as casting out demon and healing the sick. You speak in too much tongues. Baby, it's tongues <laughs> that pushed me. One encounter that I had that I didn't tell you. I remember one day I was, that same time I was just meditating, lying on the bed. And I spoke in tongues. But all of a sudden there was a different tongues that almost seemed uncontrollable by me, knowing that I could control it. But something, and I begin to speak in some tongues till I'm communing in my mind and saying, is this really me? I said, what's going on here? I'm serious. My body is reacting by the power and the anointing that is flowing from my spirit. I'm the communion. And I'm there, that's why the Bible says, when you speak in tongues unto God, it is unprofitable. Because I felt the power and the presence of God. I was going off in tongues. But my mind was trying to catch up asking, what is this? <laughs> so when I come and I tell you, I love Jesus. When you hear me in Bible study, and I love Jesus. Guys, this is not just words. And then God began to save my family members. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Just lift your hand and worship and reverence the King of King, the Lord of glory, our precious Jesus, darling Holy Spirit. Just lift your hand and begin to pray and tell him, guide me, Holy Spirit. Guide me, Holy Spirit. Guide me, Holy Spirit. Listen, God don't want us to be out of courts Christians. He wants us in the innermost part of the holies of holies. In the Old Testament, only certain people were allowed. The normal people could be in the outer court. The, the, the regular priest could be in the inner part. But only the high priest was able to be in the holies of holies. Do you know what happened in the holies of holies? It is where the tangible glory of God. It is the place he who dwells under the shadow of the most high. We say that scripture but we say it lightly. We don't even get it. But he that dwells under the shadow of the most high. The shadow is not just a mental conception. The shadow is a place where deep calls unto deep. The, the, the shadow is a place where the glory of God resides where sickness is destroyed sin is removed and you are endowed with power and that's why when Jesus died the veil in the temple ripped and any person could stand on the outside and look straight into the holies of holies Christianity is beyond. Hallelujah. I don't feel like, praise the Lord. But you can only get there by the transportation of humility when you have yielded yourself to the voice of the Holy Spirit that takes you there, Odin. When you are taken to that place, it is consistency that keeps you there. And when you are taken to that place, forgiveness becomes easy. Loving your neighbor becomes easy. Showing mercy becomes easy. Showing grace becomes easy. Sharing with one another becomes easy. And you will never worry another day in your life. Because you will know God as Psalm 121. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth. I will not be smited by the sun by day. Nor the moon by night. 
for he preserves my soul. He that keeps Israel neither slumber nor sleep. And it is the Holy Spirit that truly reveals Jesus to you. Without the Holy Spirit, as stated in John 16, you cannot know Jesus because it is he that testifies of the risen Christ. We are not only noise-making believers. We are believers who have encountered the one who we serve. Come on, say, I rely. I rely. I rely on Precious hope. Precious I rely. Do you mean it this morning? Do you want to know him in greater depths and dimensions? I depend on you, reassuring Holy Ghost. I depend on Holy Ghost. Come on, lift your voice and call the name of the blessed Holy Spirit. Holy, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Without you, without you, I am nothing, nothing at all. Holy. Come on, tell him from your heart this morning. Without you, I am nothing, nothing at all. Holy Ghost, I rely, I rely, I rely, I rely, I rely. On. If you need prayer, just come.